We are just welcoming anyone who wants to be here, making sure that everybody is full from food and also from friendship. Twice a month, we serve supper to anyone in the community who needs to come, wants to be here. And the first supper was February 29th, 2012. We had 42 people, and it has grown steadily to now we're serving. Our highest mark was 212. My first reaction was, this sounds like exactly what Jesus did. Wherever Jesus went, he convened people around a meal. We were just in the beginning stages of the recovery from the Great Recession, so there was still that feeling of need that needed to be served. We had families who their houses had been foreclosed and they were living in their cars. One thing led to another and I thought, well, why we've got this kitchen that's underutilized, why can't we start a meal program? Not a soup kitchen, but a meal program that allowed us to welcome our neighbors who might be food insecure, but also those who might be feeling isolated or single parents who are stressed trying to put a meal on the table. You're watching parents have their children go through the line first and then they'll come back and eat. It's a classic sign that there's food insecurity in that house. And then other parents will say, we cannot afford to have my daughter have guests for dinner. So she gets to invite three friends to supper and that for her is a great night. It doesn't get any better than that. I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. My mother had the philosophy that I want your friends to feel always welcome. Whether it was a sad occasion or a happy occasion, there was always great food. The fellowship for us is very important. There's no assigned seating. You walk in the door and you sit down next to somebody that once you finish talking to them, you have a connection with them. The supper crew is a wonderful group. I do the menus, I do the shopping, and then they show up at one o'clock on Wednesday. And so from one to three, there's chopping. That's followed with people preparing the meat, the entrees. And one of the miracles of supper is that we feed you know, 175 people out of a broom closet. The doors open at six. There's usually a line waiting. When we do a survey, the third highest reason for how people learn about the supper program and why they come is our banner on the corner. All are welcome, supper, 6 p.m. Supper has been a great front door of this parish in terms of welcoming people who might not think of coming to St. Martin's. It has a, a tradition of being an old Episcopal church in Chestnut Hill. We were tearing the wrappers off of that and welcoming everybody. We feel like we're ministering to the neighborhood, not just to membership. It's really changed how we are viewed in the community, but also it's provided us with a new lens for us to look at the community people in need, food insecurity, parents struggling. We consciously think of everything we do with supper in the lead as for the whole neighborhood. There was a supper guest who really hadn't said anything the first couple months and he came up to me after this one supper and said that dessert that was on the dessert table, my mother used to make that. It just brings back such wonderful memories for me. To me, that's what food does. It connects you with your past, it connects you with your future, hopefully friendships that you'll create here. Having a community that supports you with food and fellowship is the first step in healing for that person. I never expected that this little volunteer meal program would grow to serving on a monthly basis a thousand people. It's just this beautiful vision every time it happens. Every type of person sitting together, making relationships. It's a little vision of the kingdom of God.